Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a professor of construction management. I've been doing videos for uh, a little while now, uh, since about early 2020. And this series that I'm currently doing is on the fifth edition of my textbook, How to Read and Understand Construction Drawings. You don't have to have the textbook to learn in this particular series of videos or course if you like, um, but I'm gonna be running through different aspects based on the chapters, use it, utilizing the drawings that come with the textbook. In the description below, I'll provide links to the other videos. It's also on a playlist. If you click on my face over there, you should be able to get into the playlist and look for understanding construction drawings. So let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at, uh, based on chapter three, video one, we start to talk about elevation drawings. So I want to basically go over some basic information that you'll find on elevation drawings in a upcoming video we'll be looking at floor plan drawings um, but I want you to really sort of visualize what's going on on the outside of a house so what I've done is I've taken pictures of a house under construction and then the actual drawings and then comparing and contrasting so you really get a sense of applied what is real and what the drawings look like and what some of the nuances are. So that's really what I wanna run through in this video. We'll talk about some of the materials that we see and some of the elevations. And then in the next video, I wanna dive in and unpack that stuff and add in a few things like design aspects and why things are a certain way and limitations with regards to um, zoning and permits and other things that go on. So we'll look at basically height and width of a single face. I'll look at each face of the building, the front, the right, the left, and the rear of the building. And the drawings are orthographic. So as I said in a previous video, all that's a fancy way of saying flat on views. You can't really see depth in orthographic drawings. And that's how most construction drawings are. We do have BIM models that I also talked about in a previous video, three-dimensional models, but this is what we're, we're trying to get used to understanding that things are flat. And I've got to look at things from different orientations to understand them, right? And to really picture them well. Um, you'll find that every building in construction will have an elevation drawing for each face of the building. But you may also find that in the interior views and other views, you may have elevations like of kitchen cabinets, of uh, fancy wall cabinetry for a library, of uh, intricate tiling details for a bathroom. You can have those as well. So all an elevation means is a vertical flat on view of a surface. So our drawings, one of the drawings that we use in my textbook is the Doncaster drawings. And that particular set, I actually took pictures of it during construction. I know I could have 3D models, of which I do in the book, but I also find that um, seeing the actual tangible photos of what was constructed, it helps you to better visualize things. So this is the front view. And on an elevation, I'll unpack this a little more in the next video, um, but this is a front on view. I can see, I can't really tell how far out this part comes. Like I, I can tell it comes out because there's a roof over it. There's a little bit of a gable roof. That's what we call a gable roof. Um, this is what we call a hip roof, right? This is the roof slope based on measurements to 12. So 10 and a half inch. So basically it'll go vertically 10 and a half inches for every 12 inches horizontal. So you'll always be looking for these kind of slope signals because that gives a ton of information of how we lay out the rafters, or in this case, the upper roof would be trusses, the lower roof would be cut rafters, which we'll talk about in a later video. Um, we can see there's dormers here. I can kind of get an idea that these dormers are kind of fake, uh, meaning that they're there for aesthetic to make the building look more grandiose, um, but it says black building paper behind the fixed glass, FG, fixed glass panel right? And the window sizes are given. This is metric, but it could just as easily be, you know, um, in imperial feet and inches. Uh, we got a roof slope, this box window at the side, I can kind of see stuff that is below ground. I can see there's hidden lines. That's a previous video that we looked at basically the line types. And this means it's under the ground or behind something. So um, that's showing me that these dash lines are showing me that these windows open and that they're casement windows. This is showing me the actual height from finished ground floor to finished second floor. So just quickly, just trying to get you to 
visualize and orient um, yourself. This is saying underside of footing, 1220 minimum. That's basically for us where I'm located to get below the frost line. We're like at four feet below ground to get to um, the actual frost line. And so you can see in me measurements like from the outside, that would be from the outside of the brick wall to the center of where the dormer is going. That's a measurement that we would have, right? This is for basically the projection of the roof. How far does the roof project? And that would be about six inches, 150 millimeters. Um, so this is the front elevation. What does this actually look like? Well, it looks like this. So when we're actually constructing it, it looks like this. You can kind of see, like I said, these are fake windows. These are there to add, make it look a little bit more grandiose, um, the house. In a lot of cases, dormers are real, but not in this particular case for this particular design. You can see this is sticking out and this is sticking out. But I really, even at this front view with the, the camera, it's not perfectly flat. I can see a little bit of three dimensions. I do get the sense of what's going on. I can pick up some little differences like they decided to just run this through over here instead of having that space. That was probably a decision made on site. I can see things like the roof vent that's not showing over on the actual um, drawing over here. But other than that, there's a lot of things that are very similar here. So that's the front elevation. The right elevation is like looking at the whole right side of the house. I can see the dormer sticking out. I can see this is a hip roof on the dormer. I can see, oh, there looks like some kind of roof on the back, on the main roof here. Oh, this sticks out a lot. Wow, that sticks out a lot. This sticks out not so much. Okay, so I can see some of the nuanced differences that are occurring there on the right side view. What does that look like in real life? Oh, I couldn't really fit between the two houses to get the whole thing. So this is just a straight wall. Um, but I could get this, so I can see this sticks out. I can see there's a window here, right? So there's a window right there. I can see there's this bracket that is um, there, a little bit different looking perhaps, but not greatly. And I can see the support elements there. And I can kind of see that there's a garage door there. All right, left side, lots of stuff going on here. Um, so basically the left side elevation, we've got this box window, we've got a casement window, we've got a bunch of windows. They're kind of built up with this sort of, um, trim piece underneath it. So I can see a whole bunch of things. I can see the dormer on the other side. I can see that roof on the other side. I can see this part sticking out. What does that look like? Okay. Difference here. This falls off. So these drawings were based on a model house drawings, and this was on a specific lot. And we'll talk about this when I get into chapter five and we look at the site plan every lot on a property is different so in this case instead of being flat it drops off there's a, a grade change a significant grade change that takes place so that that makes a little bit difference in what these drawings show and what is actually um, constructed the actual revised drawings would have would have showed that this um, would have fallen off a little bit with the stepping of the brick. So you don't want just a whole big concrete surface here, right? Uh, we can see uh, the building system. So this is where the electrical service is going to enter into the house. This is the gas service here. Here we've got rainwater leaders coming down, um, basically downspouts. We can see some of the roof vents. They usually want to keep the roof vents off uh, the front of the roof. I find it's kind of interesting that they put the roof fence low when this is actually a um, when it's actually a um, uh, vented soffit. So that probably means these are bathroom vents. These are not roof vents. These are bathroom vents. So to vent the fans, the exhaust fans in the bathroom, because you wouldn't put them that low otherwise. But the roof fence, you would um, to ventilate the roof. And you'll see later on when we look at the floor plans, that is true in this case. So there's all these things of what happens in reality. They typically don't th show things like the roof fence on the drawings. Um, they'll say in the drawings, typically that the roof has to be vented and usually some sort of building code relation, like one square foot of ceiling uh, for basically every, um, basically if you've got one square foot of ventilation for every 300 square feet of ceiling, right? That was where that would tie in. Um, for ventilation, venting out the roof. And we'll talk about that more when we talk about the building science and building envelope chapter. Again, you can see roof slopes here. 
You can see the side, you can see the rear. There is that, there is that uh, gable roof that we see. So the gable roof is over here and we can see that that is at the rear of the house and we can see uh, again, basically this is what's below grade. This is what's below grade for your basement. This is um, the patio door at the back. This is essentially our um, windows and these ones open where you see the dash line, they're casement windows. So that's very helpful to know that information. We can see that this is basically brick and it's talking about brick, right? Brick, header, stack bond. So that's the placement of those brick. Headers is the end of the bricks, stack bonded with 10 proj. With, that means the W means with, 10 millimeter projection to make the brick stand out a little bit. All right. So that that helps to in the detailing. These are soldier bricks that are placed over top for decorative purposes. It's telling you it's a face brick. That's a brick veneer, one white wide, one coursing wide. It'll have a one inch airspace. And we'll unpack that in chapter four when we talk about details and information about that but just giving you an orientation here right now and just getting you to understand and visualize i'm looking at this and i'm building this now in this particular case like i said these drawings they have that slope and we'll talk about that with the site plan in chapter five so you can do a little bit more things or you have to do a little bit more things you could make a bigger basement window when the property slopes right because this model is built 30 40 times in this subdivision where hundreds of houses are built it's built repetitively not every house but maybe every 10th house or every eighth house has this kind of design and so on this lot, a flat lot, this is what we do. On a sloping lot, well, we'd have to step down to get down to the ground, but we could put bigger windows because the basement is more out of the ground at the back, which makes the basement nicer from that perspective. So there's these different nuanced um, changes. And when we're looking at flat on views, and you can see sort of the, the header bricks going up the side of the windows, the soldier bricks going over top, the nice brick and louver at the back of this gable to really sort of make it pop. Um, when we are looking at individual views, we should be trying to see it three-dimensionally, understand what we're looking at three-dimensionally. If we can picture that, that's what we're after. That's visualization. That's looking at single drawings, basically the rear view the right side view and picturing how they join up in your mind's eye. Now, if we have a 3D model, that's nice. But if we don't, should always be picturing it. And plus, you're still, even if you have a 3D model, you're going to have these orthographic drawings that spell out things like the dimensions, like information that it's pointing at. And so you really do have to develop that skill of visualizing the end product and what it should look like and seeing is there any problems here looking ahead because you're worth a lot if you can actually identify any particular problems um, and so that's very helpful from that perspective i would also see the vents like i said these are going to be for the bathroom vents that we'll talk about later on i would probably have try to have them up the wall a little bit more so that basically if we get any buildup of snow and ice here we don't have any problems around the vents little things that you learn over time this little hole here that we see there is actually where the gas fireplace is going to have its direct vent to the outside wall when they finish it because this house is still under construction right um, so these are some of the elements that we are looking at and thinking about with this project and visualizing so that's what i wanted to do for this video i just wanted you to get an idea of how everything fits together and what we're doing with it and how important it is to understand construction drawings, understand code requirements, zoning requirements. We're gonna get into that in the next video a little bit with what we call architectural control, um, uh, which is basically some controls that local townships may put on what a builder can and can't um, do, right? So hopefully this gives you a sort of a good introduction to looking at elevations and sort of picturing what is an elevation drawing it's a straight face on orthographic view and what is kind of information is it telling me and in the next video i want to unpack a little bit about elevations and heights that will the dimensions that will be provided for you 
So I'm Tom Stevenson. If you like this video, um, please subscribe. It definitely helps the channel. Check out my playlists. Check out the description below. I'll have a link for purchase of the textbook. I've got thousands of questions in the textbook. You got to practice reading construction drawings to really get good at it. You got to not just look at things passively, but actively try to answer questions uh, that you're observing when you're reading drawings. So um, I'm hoping that will be helpful for you too. So again, I'm Tom Stevenson. Professor of Construction Management, uh, wishing you the best and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye for now.